Hey everyone, Jeremy Blum back with another episode of Tech Bits. This is episode number 12, and this week I'll be talking about uh, choosing a monitor or display that's right for your, your needs. Uh, I'll talk briefly about CRTs and then LCDs, and then I'll get into the different specifications that you want to look at when you're picking out an LCD monitor and different panel types for LCD monitors. Before I get into that, let me congratulate my brother, Zoop425, on, um, or David, as you might know him in the real world, on getting second place in the Ultimate Computers.net member awards. He, I actually came in first for the total number of votes overall, but I'm obviously not going to give myself a free shirt, so I sent David a free Ultimate Computers.net t-shirt, and I'll post the results for the results link in the uh, so sidebar for this YouTube video if you want to see what the final results are. Thanks to everyone who voted, and congratulations to everyone who won in uh, a single category. All right, let me get into talking about monitors now. I'll talk briefly about CRTs here. I know you're probably thinking, you know, CRTs are old, who cares? They do actually have a couple advantages over LCD monitors. First off, they have a much higher contrast ratio than LCD monitors do. Uh, I'll talk about this a little bit later, but basically the contrast ratio is going to be a measurement of the difference between the darkest colors on the screen and the brightest colors on the screen. Um, so they have a much larger range there than LCDs do. They can also operate on a continuous range of resolutions and refresh rates. So they have one maximum resolution, but any resolution below that they can scale to um, pretty efficiently, whereas LCDs you can't do that because you have physical number of pixels locking you into a certain resolution that you can choose that fits that ratio. Um, they're going to actually experience less lag time than LCDs, so they have a faster response time than uh, most LCD monitors which is actually pretty significant for gamers. I know some gamers that actually still use CRTs. You're not going to get as good color reproduction and as high quality image, but you will get the fastest response time from a CRT, so that's worth thinking about. Obviously, CRTs are gigantic. You might just not be able to fit one on your desk. Uh, they have very dangerous internal components. The flyback capacitor inside operates at a very high voltage and can easily severely injure you or kill you um, if you come in contact with it while the monitor is active. They operate at a lower maximum resolution than LCDs, which you probably all know. They're just an older technology. They, they haven't advanced as much in terms of squeezing a higher resolution in there. And obviously, LCDs are available in much larger sizes than CRTs are. Also importantly, CRTs are prone to burning and distortion by magnets because they operate with electron, several electron guns inside that are generating the image on the, on the screen that you see. If you put a magnetic field anywhere near an electron, there is going to be an attraction or repulsion, and that's going to distort the image on the screen. LCDs, on the other hand, much smaller and lighter than, L than CRTs, of course. Uh, the flat screen prevents physical distortion. They don't have those little rounded corners that you might see on some CRTs. Um, they do, however, have a worse viewing angle than CRTs. Uh, so if you get at a severe angle with the screen, the color reproduction is going to be worse on an LCD than on a CRT in most cases. Um, they also have a slow response time than CRTs, as I mentioned previously. And they support higher resolutions than CRTs, as you would expect, um, but they only have one native resolution, which is the resolution that they look by far the best at. They can't just scale to any resolution that a CRT can. Alright, let's get into LCD specifications here. The first thing you're going to want to look at is, of course, going to be screen size and aspect ratio. Um, above 22 inches, almost all monitors are widescreen, so that's 16 by 9. Um, below that, you can get 16 by 9 or full screen, which is 4 by 3. And now some of the very large monitors are actually available in a super wide format, which is 2 by 1. Um, so which one of those you get is going to be up to you. Almost everyone's going to widescreen now. It's better for movies, better for most games. Um, however, you should keep in mind that because of the way the size of a monitor is measured, uh, it's actually going to give you less screen real estate than a full-size monitor. Um, so what I'm talking about there in terms of the way a screen size is measured is actually measured diagonally. So if you see this monitor, for example, um, this is a 20.1 inch monitor. That doesn't mean it's like 20.1 inches across or anything like that. It's actually 20.1 inches measured from one diagonal corner to another diagonal corner. So if you think about it and you do the trigonometry out, um, basically you can realize that um, widescreen monitors are going to give you less screen real estate for a 20-inch monitor than a full-screen 20-inch monitor is going to give you. So that's just something to think about. Um, next thing to consider here is going to be the native resolution of your monitor. Um, so LCDs basically support one native resolution, and this is equivalent to the physical number of pixels on the panel. Um, so back to my monitor again, this is a 1600 by 1200 full-screen monitor. Um, that means there's literally, in each row, 
1600 pixels and in each column 1200 pixels. So that's going to be the maximum and native resolution that it operates at. If you want to go to a smaller resolution, let's say 800 by 600, it has to scale that down and the computer is actually going to have to blend pixels and extrapolate a new image uh, on, to determine how that should be displayed. Uh, you basically have to blend pixels together to make that work right. Uh, as a result, if you scale to lower resolutions than the native resolution, you're generally going to get a kind of blurry image uh, and the quality is not going to be as good as if you're operating the monitor at its native resolution. Another really important thing to consider, especially for gamers, is the response time of the monitor. So this is the time it takes to alter the state of any given pixel. Um, this can mean from on to off, off to on, or from one state to another state. Um, but basically the higher response time is going to mean you have a blurry image. So when you're playing games, obviously you want the response time to be as short as possible so that the image changes as rapidly as the gameplay is changing so you can keep up in the game uh, and you're not experiencing ghosting or blurring or anything like that. An important thing to look out for uh, when you're looking at the manufacturer's specs for a monitor is that the reported response time is often not referring to the time it takes your pixel to turn on or off. That takes the longest. Um, but actually for it to go from one color setting to another color setting or gray to gray time it's called um, and this is going to report lower numbers than if you just measure on to off or off to on. So it's going to be a little misleading. Um, as a result of this, you shouldn't actually compare response times absolutely. You should compare them relatively from one monitor to another. You can't say if one has an 8 millisecond response time and another one has a 10 millisecond response time. You need to look at those two next to each other and say this one's smaller than this one, therefore it probably has a slower or faster overall response time. Um, just looking at absolute values isn't going to give you a good idea of how good the monitor is because of the way that they're reported. Another important thing to consider, uh, depending on how you're going to have your monitor set up on your desk, is the viewing angle. So the larger the angle, the more dramatic angle you're making with the side of the monitor. So for example, a 180 degree viewing angle would be, if I have my monitor here and I'm watching it all the way from this side over here, I'm almost looking at the panel straight on from this side. With basically any LCD monitor, the colors are going to get distorted um, and the image is not going to look as good as you make a more severe angle with the monitor. Uh, if you look at the specifications for a monitor you consider buying, the higher the viewing angle, generally the less and less the color is going to be distorted out to a distance like that, the image will still look pretty good. Another thing to keep in mind is that horizontal and vertical viewing angles are very often different from each other, so keep an eye out for that, for that when you're looking out for specifications depending on how you're going to have your monitor oriented on your desk. A really important thing to consider is contrast ratio. This is something that manufacturers love to talk about. Basically, the higher the contrast ratio, the bigger the difference between the darkest dark on the screen and the lightest light color. Uh, a higher contrast ratio is the, means you're going to have deeper blacks, um, so more real blacks, and much brighter whites and brighter bright colors. Um, so this value is actually going to vary based on the intensity of the backlighting at a given location on the screen. So on cheaper monitors, one thing you'll very often notice is the backlight kind of bleeds, so you'll see it backlight more around the edges of the screen than you'll see in the middle. Um, so when they're determining the value for the contrast ratio on cheaper monitors, one thing that they might do is compare a darker color on, in the middle of the screen where the backlight doesn't affect it as much to a brighter color on the edges of the screen. Um, and this is going to result in a value that's not really representative of the actual contrast ratio of the whole monitor. Um, so that's something to keep an eye out for. If you are going to go for a cheaper screen, um, I'll talk about the different panel types later, but with some of the cheaper panels, you might have an issue with that. Um, so just keep an eye out for that. That's why it's generally a good idea to go check out a particular monitor in person at a store to see how good the images look in person instead of just buying it online. Another thing to consider here is uh, color accuracy and the number of colors on the screen. Um, so this is basically going to be dependent on the number of bits of an image that it can reproduce. Um, but basically, the more colors that a monitor can display, the more accurate it's going to be able to display a given image as accurately as possible. These values are generally in the tens of millions. Um, so you're going to be looking for a particular number of bit display. Basically, these are all pretty high right now. It's, it's not a huge difference between them. I'll talk about it in a little bit though. Um, the least expensive panel types have a 6-bit color instead of an 8-bit color which is going to not display um, the largest range of colors possible. And that's something important to consider especially if you're doing graphic design. Next important spec is of course brightness. Um, so brightness is measured in candelas per square meter so in a given location on the screen how much brightness is produced. 
like I said before, this can be dependent upon the backlighting on the screen and how even it is. On more expensive monitors, the backlighting is going to be way more even. On less expensive monitors, you might see some backlight bleeding on the, around the edges of the screen, and that's going to affect the brightness rating. So once again, this is probably something you want to go into a store uh, and look at this particular monitor, see how the backlight looks, uh, and then determine for yourself whether or not the brightness level is what you'd be comfortable with. You might prefer a higher brightness level for gaming, uh, whereas most people generally prefer a lower brightness level for stuff like office work. It's less straining on the eyes. Um, in terms of actual values, high values like above 400 are generally what you would want for watching a movie, whereas something between 2 and 300 candelas per square meter is better for office work. All right, so let's talk about the three panel types. What a lot of people don't realize when they're buying monitors is there's actually three different types of LCD panels. Um, ranging from most expensive to least expensive. So the most expensive type of panel is an IPS panel. These are going to give you the best image quality, the best color range, and a fantastic viewing angle. But they're very expensive. Um, I believe that these monitors, the Dell UltraSharps or IPS, they're really great for editing videos because they have excellent color reproduction and they're great for surfing the web and stuff. However, they're not the best for gaming as they don't offer the fastest response times. So this is actually going to be important for gamers and I'll talk a little, in a little bit about the monitor type that you're going to want to get if you're a gamer. The middle of the range uh, monitor type is called VA panels. These actually have the worst response times, so steer away from these if you're a gamer, um, whereas IPS is reasonable if you want to do gaming on it. Uh, they do, however, have the best contrast ratio, so this is going to be great for movies, um, but they do suffer from color shifting when viewed at an angle, so these are going to be monitors that you view straight on. When you start to view them at an angle, the colors are going to get a bit distorted and weird. Um, otherwise, though, they have very good image quality. Not quite as good as IPS, but they can be quite a bit less expensive than IPS. So VA is probably what I would recommend if you want to be watching movies or something. Um, very good color reproduction, but not super expensive. Now, the cheapest monitor panel types are called TN panels. So these are the most common and the cheapest. Almost all monitors above 22 inches are these TN panels. Now, I'm not saying that these are bad panels by any means. They are just the cheapest. Um, they actually have the best response time, so most gamers are going to want to spring for these TN panels because they'll be fantastic for gaming. Uh, however, the color reproduction, the viewing angle, and the contrast ratio are going to be the worst of all three panel types. So these are definitely not good if you're doing image editing or anything like that. For games, though, you're probably not really going to notice it all that much, uh, and you're probably going to want to lean towards these because of the fast response time. With the color levels on these TN panels, they actually use 6-bit instead of 8-bit color, which is going to mean a lower color range than the VA and IPS panel types. So like I said, price steer clear of these if you're doing graphic design stuff, but for gaming, they are probably the right choice to make. Now the last thing to talk about here is, of course, inputs. Um, so there's all kinds of inputs available now. HDMI, DVI, DisplayPort, VGA, Composite, Component, S-Video, the list goes on. Um, basically, you're just going to want to pick out the monitor that has the right specs for you. Uh, a lot of monitors have multiple display inputs now, uh, DVI, VGA, HDMI all in one monitor. Um, some of them have TV tuners built in, so if that's something you're interested in, you might want to consider that as well. Or built in webcams, uh, USB hubs built into a lot of them now. Um, so those are just extra features that you want to maybe consider. Another important thing is if you want to be playing Blu-ray, um, protected content from your computer on these monitors, you need to get an HDCP monitor. So your video card and your monitor both need to support HDCP if you want to watch protected content Blu-ray movies. Um, so that's really something to keep in mind if you're planning to do that. Most monitors support that now. Alright, so that's basically all I have um, for monitors and panels in general. Uh, if you have any questions about this kind of stuff, feel free to post a comment on this video or head over to ultimatecomputers.net and post something up in the forum. I hope this video was helpful, and uh, feel free to send me suggestions for future TechBits episodes. Um, Alright, that's it. See you guys next time. Bye.